Montréal, vous le savez, c'est francophone et anglophone. Et on a eu envie, évidemment, d'entendre chaque semaine un sujet de l'actualité anglophone dé décrypté en anglais. Aujourd'hui, c'est Andrew Tay qui se prête au jeu. Andrew est artiste en danse, initiateur de plusieurs projets qui rassemblent la communauté, comme Short and Sweet et beaucoup d'autres, et également commissaire au Centre Chorégraphique au Vertigo. Andrew, aujourd'hui, tu vas nous parler stéréotypes sur les artistes en danse anglophones. C'est à toi. Bonjour, Andrew. Hi. So, first, thank you for inviting me to this first edition. I also think it's a really interesting proposition to give space for, um, like, an English language segment within this um, within this uh, program. Um, and it's way easier for me to talk, so uh, thank God for that. <laughs> um, but I, I really was struggling with what I wanted to talk about and what subject, and then I was like, well, given it's like the first one dedicated to kind of speaking in English, I'm like, well, maybe it's interesting to like really take on this idea of language and relationship to dance, and not to just speak about stereotypes of English artists, because I'd like to, I, I will, we will speak about this, but also to talk about maybe some of the challenges or like the realities of being an anglophone um, dance artist in in Montreal mm -hmm. um, and so I want to acknowledge a few things firstly this is going to come from my personal experience and in no way can I represent anglophone dance or the anglophone community I don't want that responsibility please um, and then there's a question of does an, the ang an anglophone dance community actually exist that's maybe a bigger question that would take a full other um, show um, I also want to say that I really strongly identify as a Quebecois artist. Um, I did my um, post-secondary education here. All of my references are from here. I'm deeply embedded in the community here. Um, and I'm, I relate to the aesthetics from here. Like I, I speak to a lot of other Anglophone artists and a lot of us, I think, feel the same way in terms of like when we go to the rest of Canada, there's definitely a difference between the artists. So like there's something specific about Anglophone artists from Montreal. Um, And so if we're going to talk about identification, like saying that how easily I can identify as a Quebec artist, um, I think it's more difficult and I struggle with, and I think a lot of other artists here in Montreal struggle with, um, identifying as an Anglophone dance artist. And this is for a couple of reasons, I think. Firstly, I think in dance we like to think, oh, there's no language and, uh, you know, we're beyond language. And so it seems weird to identify that and we just want to be like artists. Um, and then secondly, I think that a lot of Anglophone artists who are based here and speaking for myself are pretty conscious of the history of like colonization of the British and also I would say even more sensitive to the dominance of the English language in greater society. Um, so we want to be careful with that and to be respectful and I think that that's also very specific of being here. I know I've sat on the, um, I was working with Elan, the English Language Artist Network, and they actually have problems getting members because a lot of Um, Anglophone dance artists don't specifically want to identify as English language dance artists because they don't feel it's necessary. And um, I think which is much different when we're speaking about other language based arts like theater and poetry and, and all of these other disciplines. Um, and on the flip side, it's interesting when I'm here, um, the difference between when I'm working in an international context, the default language is English. And this goes for even when we're when at all of the international dance schools, um, a lot of the international dance companies, even if they're based in a country where the first language is in English, the default language becomes English. So it's just an interesting like switch a lot of the times about the comfortability of like, you know, when I go internationally, it's like assume that I speak English. And then when I'm here, even though there's lots of English language artists here, I, I never assume that um, unless I'm only working with English artists. Um, and so I feel like sometimes there's this sometimes maybe a little bit of a perceived stigma about identifying as an English language artist here um, and then also match with this wanting to be respectful of the culture and the history um, so yeah um, maybe how much time do I have left tu as le temps encore ok um, so, <laughs> un bon 5 minutes encore 5 minutes ok good 5 minutes good <laughs> um So, yeah, maybe I'll skip that and I'll go to, like, I, I, another thing that's interesting about being an Anglophone dance artist here, I think, is recognizing 
how much cultural pride um, in Quebec is wrapped up around contemporary dance and how much it is linked to um, the cultural identity here, which is really beautiful. And you see this a lot in the way that arts is supported here more than in other um, places in, in the country. And the way that I would say like the general population relates it to their culture much more than if I'm in Toronto or if I'm in Vancouver. I don't think there's the same kind of pride of like, you know, identifying contemporary dance with Ontario or Toronto as it is to here. And this is really beautiful and it comes with a lot of other like problems and baggage that that is associated with it. And I also want to say that I'm thinking of things really from a contemporary dance perspective and I think this is really important to say because that is what's identified with, I think, kind of Quebec um, culture in some ways because if I if I think about the urban dance community, I don't know if the artists have the same kind of like you know, identification with language, because when I go to their events, I think it's really, really mixed. This can be for many reasons, like firstly, because of the history of, you know, how contemporary dance became really popular here in the 80s, and that's how it got identified with um, Quebec culture. And these other newer forms also come from other places. Um, so maybe there's not so much of a, a link between them. But it would be interesting to talk to them about how they identify with language and, um, yeah. So let's go to stereotypes <laughs> of like living here in Quebec as an English language artist. So one I think is this idea of like les deux solitudes, um, like the two sides, which I think is an old kind of way of thinking about things, but I still get this thrown in my face a lot of the time. Like sometimes people introduce me as an Anglophone artist and say like, oh, there's such a different way that people like work and blah, 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 which in some ways I feel, but also it's like really complicated for me. I think in dance, today there's like a lot of collaboration a lot of mixing I think most companies have anglophone and francophone dancers I think people who work with only just one it's, that's a little bit of a question for me and it's maybe a little bit like could be I'm, I mean I think that's a little bit boring for myself and also as like uh, you know when I, when I started doing the events I did with Sasha Kleinplatz once and needs one of the things we wanted to do was bring communities together and uh, and I think that's one of the really nice things about being here and living here in Quebec um, and to also say that throughout the history of Quebec dance there's been people like you know Dina DeVita Miriam from 303 Michael Toppings Jack Udashkin these are all Anglophones who have contributed a lot to the kind of bigger discourse and dance in Quebec Again, I don't know how many of them would want to identify as Anglophone specifically, but this is a whole other question. Um, then the last stereotype I'd like to bring up, which is a big one, is about I feel like right now there's this kind of sense that a lot of Anglophone artists are way more um, implicated in a discourse around rethinking ideas of like systemic bias and more conscious of social issues and put that more in their work. Um, I'd be interested to talk to you guys if you feel that that's one of the stereotypes. Um, and I think this for many reasons um, one is maybe people are more vocal about it on the on the anglophone side there's more writing from the English um, language um, in general um, and for sure a lot of the works have been touring that are from anglophone artists right now actually directly address those issues in their work um, in a very like interesting way artistically and uh, so I mean this is one of the things what I'd like to say today as a kind of like that one thing that I find disturbing when we talk about language is recently the way that I feel that language is being weaponized by um, politicians and by um, with everything that's going on with Slav, Kanata and all of these issues that um, there's kind of this idea of like, oh, th these ideas are coming from radicals from Concordia. These ideas are coming from, don't bring your American problems here to <laughs> us, which is really, and the CAC who says things like, there's no systemic racism in Quebec. This is a problem because I think it kind of weaponizes a fear of English because of the history that's happened here as a dominant language. And what it does, it manipulates people who live here who may not yet have an opinion but because they've had this historical fear of the language, that gets them to to like be manipulated to think in certain ways. And I really want to uh, strongly discourage folks from like weaponizing language in order to like make political kind of gestures. Um, because I think also there are a lot of francophones thinking about these issues, and it negates the fact that there are a lot of people um, on the franc francophone side too who are trying to think about these things. Um, yeah, uh, that's, 
That's what Thank I have to say today. You. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>